Welcome to the Lionfish Tutorials, a series of how-to instructional videos covering collecting and handling, monitoring, and dissection. The marine environment is a diverse and changing habitat. Invasive lionfish are a recent threat to our native marine systems, and there is great concern over the impacts they are causing. The good news is that local control through regular removals can be very successful in keeping lionfish numbers down and minimizing their impacts. Lionfish have been found in all habitat types, from shorelines to depths of over 1,000 feet, preferring structure when it is available. Lionfish are now being documented as one of the most abundant fish on some sites and are reaching densities of over 300 fish per hectare. Lionfish have been documented to consume more than 70 species of fish and many invertebrates. They are gape-limited, stalking predators and can take prey larger than half their own length. Prey include commercially valuable species like juvenile grouper and snapper, recreationally important species like fairy basslets, seahorses and jawfish among others, and ecologically important species like grazers including parrotfish that help keep algal growth in check and cleaner species that pick parasites and clean wounds to maintain the health of the fish community. Lionfish are capable of significantly impacting the biomass of their fish prey. The good news is that local control can be effective. Through focused regular removal efforts, lionfish densities can be significantly reduced and the native marine populations recovered. While we know that control efforts are having a positive effect on keeping lionfish numbers down, it is important to know how well we are doing and whether or not removal efforts are sufficient to help recover native marine life populations. In addition to ecological successes of our removal efforts, it's also important to maximize efficiency in order to get the most benefit from limited human and financial resources. As we address effectiveness and efficiency, three primary questions come into play. How many lionfish are out there? What impacts are they having? And how successful are we in our current removal strategies? We also need to consider how these answers change over time. The first step in any control program should be to assess the situation. It is important to know current lionfish densities and distribution to be able to direct removal effort and measure success of removals. Both research and volunteer based monitoring can provide valuable data to assess lionfish populations and document changes. Volunteer-based programs such as roving diver surveys can be used to gather broad-scale information on lionfish locations as well as relative abundance information on both lionfish and their predators and prey. More detailed assessments, usually undertaken by more highly trained staff or volunteers, consist of transect surveys to determine biomass, and size classes of lionfish and their predators and competitors. Reef types can be categorized in many ways depending on the questions being asked. For surveying purposes, they are often separated into continuous reef or patch reef designations. Continuous reefs are typically large and well-connected systems of coral ledge or hard bottom. Surveys on these reef types are most often conducted at the same locations during each visit, so some method of marking survey locations is required. On continuous reef, a marker, often iron rebar, is installed to note the beginning of the survey area. Once the marker is located, a 50 meter transect line is placed parallel to the reef ledge or contour of the reef system. Divers then search on one side of the transect using a slow methodical search pattern, moving 10 meters out away from the line, up a few meters, then back in, repeating the search pattern the length of the transect. When they reach the beginning of the line, they search the other side 
using the same method, resulting in a 50 meter by 20 meter searched area. Concurrent to this search, if two buddy teams are available, or subsequent if only one team is available, a 20 meter measurement is made perpendicular to the first line and a second 50 meter transect is placed parallel to the first transect tape. Divers search this 50 meter by 20 meter area in the same manner as the first. Pat trees are typically smaller in size, isolated from other structure and vary in both width and length. Rather than overlaying a 50 meter by 20 meter transect, which may stretch into the sand or grass, patch reefs are surveyed in their entirety. To facilitate accurate and complete surveying of patch reefs, they are typically bisected with the transect line, allowing divers to search from the middle of the patch to the outer edge using the same methodical search pattern as continuous reefs. Patches are typically measured once to gather length by width information to allow determination of area searched. Sample data collection templates are provided as an appendix in Invasive Lionfish, a guide to control and management, but in any case should be carefully designed and thought out to standardize data collection among all divers. Key information on sizes of reported organisms as well as information on the dive specifics and environmental conditions will be valuable in documenting results. In addition to lionfish and their predators and competitors, high resolution data on prey communities is valuable in assessing ecological impacts and recovery. Since lionfish consume a wide variety of prey, usually less than 15 centimeters in total length, prey surveys must be detailed and thorough, including even small, obscure, and cryptic individuals. For continuous reef systems, Prey surveys are typically 20 meters long by 2 meters wide, 1 meter on either side of the line, and conducted along the same 50 by 20 meter transects placed for the lionfish searches. Two prey surveys may be conducted along each transect by skipping a 5 meter distance between them. For patch reefs, shorter transects may be necessary to allow a robust sample size. Data collection sheets for prey surveys should provide ample space for recording the numerous species encountered and the estimated size of each individual fish. A typical prey transect survey may take up to 20 minutes per 20 meter by 2 meter area. When searching for lionfish, care should be taken to look closely in and around structure as lionfish can often be found resting or hiding during the day. When characterizing benthic structure, one may want to record the location of any lionfish found as well as the relief and complexity of the structure they are inhabiting. Relief would include the height of the structure, while complexity refers to the number and depth of overhangs or crevices. Finally, records of the benthic community can be very valuable in looking at longer term variations in habitat and the potential effects that lionfish may be having on these habitats. A common method of record recording habitat information is the photo quadrat method, which provides archival data and permanent records. Photos should be captured using a standardized frame to ensure the same area is captured during each event. A frame providing a 50 centimeter distance above the substrate and images taken every two meters along the transect lines can be conducted in a short period following other lionfish and prey surveys. Digital images should be taken from directly above the substrate and can be archived for later analysis. Coral point count software is commonly used 
and freely available. Random points are automatically generated for each image and can be analyzed to determine bottom composition and condition. In order to assess the impacts of lionfish and to be able to determine if removal efforts are having a positive effect on restoring native marine life, we need to assess the direct and indirect impacts of lionfish. This includes not only predation, but also displacement on native fish and the indirect effects on the benthic community. Lionfish dissection can provide valuable information on biology, ecology, and impacts of lionfish and are described in detail in a separate tutorial. When combined with monitoring data, results can provide powerful indications of status and change. A key question relative to monitoring is determining how effective control programs are in reducing lionfish impact. To tease out the effects of control from other factors, monitoring must compare sites where removal efforts or management actions are in effect with other reference areas that are not being acted upon. Care should be taken to consider other influencing factors, such as episodic events and potential removals by those not involved in the study. Finally, to assess change, monitoring plans should consider the longevity of the study and frequently adequately address the questions being asked. A single event is an assessment. Monitoring takes place repeatedly over time and is necessary to address variation. Monitoring programs should be adaptive in nature as scenarios may change over time. Consideration of long-term data management and archiving should also be addressed in a monitoring plan to ensure data integrity. In summary, roving and transect surveys can be used to assess lionfish, predators, and competitors. Detailed prey transects are needed to assess direct impacts due to lionfish predation and photo quadrats to determine habitat changes. To assess effect, both treatment and control sites are needed. Music